Hey everyone, before we get into the video, I just wanted to say that we've gotten a bunch of Radiant coaches to help out with our content for the website recently, working on VOD reviews as well as a bunch of other specific courses to help you guys improve at the game. If you guys want to check out some of the things that they've been working on to help you bring your game to the next level, I highly suggest heading over to skillcap.com, link in the description below. Let's get into the video though. Now, I'm about to ruin everything that you think you know about Valorant, or maybe just confirm all of your hatred for the game. One of the two. And the reason for that is because today we're going to be talking about three aiming techniques that Tens uses to get more kills, and maybe things don't make sense yet, but trust me, they will. Because when you think about Tens, you probably think of precise gunplay, crispy flicks, and fantastic game sense. And you're not wrong to think of those things. Tens is an incredible player, but to create a video on his aiming techniques, First, what we need to do, of course, is watch his gameplay. So I looked up some Tens gameplay and spent a bit watching his stream, and I noticed something that stood out to me as a bit peculiar. Now, originally, I was going to do this video for five aiming techniques, but to be honest, it would be difficult to come up with five unique different things to comment on that we haven't done in previous videos. So if you guys are cool, I'm going to give you three pretty solid ones and just leave it at that. Sounds good? Okay, sweet. Let's get into it. Now, starting out with our first tip and actually connecting this back to why I'm going to ruin everything that you think you know about Valorant. And what do I mean about this? Well, take a look at this clip of Ten's gunfighting. Do you see anything that stands out to you as different? Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I can tell you what stands out to me particularly is that he actually moves kind of sporadically. This is what I meant by it kind of conflicts with some of the things that we know about Valorant. For example, something you learn is that generally counter strafing is good, run and gunning is bad. What we've also talked about on the channel before though is how crouching can be bad and how spraying can be bad. And especially crouching versus sheriffs is not normally a good idea. But during this gunfight, keep in mind Tens has a Vandal, he's sort of counter strafing but he never really stops spraying or really stops moving. He's taking quick steps left to right while spamming, crouching, and spraying. Specifically, this is super noticeable versus the enemy Jet who is using her knives. Now if this was just once that he did this, I don't think I'd think too much about it, but I started to notice he kind of does this a lot. I've noticed he does this a lot versus single fire weapons especially, but there are definitely clips that I see him do it versus rifles as well, and I can tell you why he does this pretty easily, but this was really surprising to me because I don't think I know any other player who sort of does this movement so aggressively. And I don't mean aggressively as in like it's an aggressive play, I mean aggressive as in he is constantly moving in these clips. But hey, the point of this channel is to teach you, so exactly why is he doing this? Well, the obvious answer is to make himself difficult to hit. He's not constantly moving and crouching and uncrouching to help him hit his shots. No, by doing this, it's actually making it a lot more difficult to land your shots. Like, we all know that you're not really accurate on the move in Valorant, and in pretty much every educational video you watch, they tell you to not move and shoot. So why is arguably the best player in the game moving so much when he shoots? Has he somehow learned how to master the recoil on the guns while moving? Well, no, of course not. The reason Tens does this is because it makes his movement unpredictable, and my guess is likely also because movement accuracy in the game is so forgiving that it doesn't really matter all that much if it causes his accuracy to be a bit off, because his bullets are all going to the same area anyway. I did ask him briefly on stream to elaborate on this though, so here was his take. You just want to make your movement unpredictable, plus there's no like, like stamina when you're crouching, so you can just kind of like mix up your movement a lot. I know it's a fairly basic response, but I do think the stamina thing that he mentioned is pretty interesting to hear. I wasn't quite sure what he meant by this initially, but apparently in games like CS, there's something called crouch stamina that prevents you from spamming crouch like you can in Valorant. From clips that I've seen, it looks like this is to prevent peaking glitches where players would just peak angles really without being seen. And as always with stuff like this, I do like to mention my experience with Counter-Strike is pretty limited, so I could be entirely wrong on this. But CSGO isn't really as important to me. What is important to me though is Valorant, and if this tactic is actually good or even usable. So I actually loaded into some deathmatch lobbies to practice this myself, and I have a few things to note. The first is that it's very awkward to gunfight like this. Like I actually had to rebind my crouch key from control to caps lock so that I could have my hand positioned more comfortably to spam crouch. Similarly to this, it also affects your aim and not just because you're literally moving and shooting at times, it affects your aim because every time you move, your crosshair moves with you. So if you crouch, your crosshair lowers and if you move right, your crosshair moves right with you. Now these changes are subtle, but it's hard and I noticed oftentimes I'd be landing a number of body shots when I'm used to only aiming for the head. 
Part of this is probably because I don't really crouch much to begin with, but it's something you should know if you're going to start practicing this. It seems like it would be as simple as just spamming crouch while gunfighting, and it's not. It's difficult and it takes practice, who would have guessed? But one of the cool things is that actually after a few DMs, I started to kind of get the hang of this and I could absolutely see how obnoxious this could get for your opponents. <laughs> There's sort of a rhythm to this movement, but overall, this seems 100% most effective versus single fire weapons, and there's a reason for this. When players are using single fire weapons, they generally are just aiming for headshots. Guns like pistols, the Guardian, or even longer range engagements with the Vandal and Phantom, these are the best times when it seems like this thing works. When players are just trying to click your head and your head is moving all around like a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men, it can be really annoying. I only really showed clips of Tens doing this with a rifle so far, but he also does the same movement with a pistol and it's likely the same reason. On pistol rounds, you're normally going versus other pistols, so these players are also just tap firing. So if you can make it harder for them to hit you, why not? I've seen other players do this with pistols though, it's mostly just the use of the tactic with rifles while spraying that caught me off guard. In the background you'll see a bunch of better clips from my DMs where the enemies could just not hit me, and this stuff really does work. And I'm sure if you practice this you would be able to perform this movement while still being decently accurate. I do find it interesting that you can take advantage of the accuracy while moving in the game and how it sort of can be abused in a way that players maybe don't expect. We hear so often that players got run and gunned and jump classic, and the more you hear it, the more you start to question, are these things actually viable? And that's actually what brings us to our second aiming technique, which again is probably not what you expected, but Tenz abuses these mechanics to the max, and that's what's really interesting about watching him. If he has a Spectre, he's going to run and gun you, and if he has a classic, he's going to be jumping when he fights you, as long as it's reasonable. And like we said, the reason for this is because this stuff actually does work. Riot has made posts about this before that they don't intend to nerf the running accuracy on guns like the Spectre because these are intended to be guns that you can use on the move. And I'm not tens, but I've been applying this stuff myself on guns like the Frenzy, and this is why I can say with confidence these are mechanics you are meant to use. It looks stupid, but us as a community have been brought to believe that run and gunning is bad, but run and gunning is actually really good in many situations. Now, obviously, you shouldn't be run and gunning people from 30 meters away when you have a vandal, but if a target target is 10 meters away and you have a specter, just full swinging an angle and not stopping can be a great idea. Similarly, even though they nerfed the jump classic recently, it's absolutely still usable in close range engagements and stuff like this is important to utilize. This stuff seems to work so well because players are so used to taking gunfights on players who will just swing like a normal person. So when somebody swings past your crosshair and keeps going, it's incredibly difficult to adjust to this. Like if a target is going to stop to shoot and then they never stop and keep going, why am I explaining this to you? We've all been Ferrari peaked like this before. It's annoying, but it works. I've seen pretty much every single pro player do this kind of stuff at one point in time, but it gets a bad rep because it relies on a bit of RNG. But the RNG is easier to rely on in closer range engagements with the right guns, and that's not a terrible thing, it's just something that we have to adapt to. Now the point of this video isn't to say that Tens uses run and gun and just relies on RNG, of course that's not correct. I think the biggest takeaway from this should be that he is constantly thinking about the mechanics in the game and how he can abuse them to his advantage. Something him, as well as probably other top tier players have noticed, is that there's not crouch stamina, so they think, how can I use this to my advantage, and moving as much as possible is the answer they come up with. Similarly, these players notice that shooting while moving is actually something that is viable at times, so they utilize this. This brings us to our third technique though, and we've mentioned it a couple times in other videos, but Tens oftentimes likes to, when going for these jiggles around corners, just spray while peeking. It's not really a counter strafe thing, like he definitely counter strafes initially, but even while he's fading away, he still just full sprays. The reasoning for this being that if your enemy tags you, even if you're running, the accuracy will actually drop down to walking accuracy since tagging slows down your character. And since we talked about earlier how walking accuracy isn't that bad, this sort of tactic can result in you picking up kills in situations where you otherwise just wouldn't. Now, it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it's more of a why not sort of thing. Like, if you're running away anyway, who cares if your shots are less accurate? Your goal isn't necessarily to land those shots, it's more to get away. But if you land the shots, it's great, and if you don't, it's no harm done. 
you sort of just do this when you're looking for a quick peek and not really looking to full commit to a gunfight. This is just a way to roll the dice and see if you can pick up a kill. Now that's actually going to do it for R3 tips, but I will go a bit further for people who maybe just didn't want to hear something that had to do with run and gunning. These were honestly just the most unique tips that I noticed that were worth mentioning. One of the things that I think really stands out to me though, as you'll see in any of the clips that I've shown, Tenza's crosshair placement is just always so clean. There's so many times that players just walk directly into his crosshair or he peeks into an angle and his crosshair is just directly on top of their head. And I normally try to avoid talking about crosshair placement in these videos unless I have something especially unique to mention, but for this video focused on aiming, I definitely feel it's worth bringing up. Specifically, if I was going to pick out one thing that impressed me, it was his ability to know exactly where to aim based on elevation. If you didn't know, elevation can make pre-aiming difficult at times because head level is generally going to change based on where the player is standing on that elevation. You'll actually see this is why Tens oftentimes favors to take the high ground in engagements, and this is mostly just because it makes it difficult for the enemies to headshot him. This is because they'll likely have to adjust their aim once they see him. But even when fighting enemies who are below him or above him, he still is able to find almost exactly where to pre-aim and pick up the kill, and this is something that stuck out to me as very impressive. Lastly, another thing that stuck out to me a bit more was how despite the spraying tactic that we talked about earlier, Tens very often will just choose to tap fire or burst fire at targets who are beyond 15 meters from him. Now most of the time he'll still throw in these crouches, but I really wanted to showcase that it's not like Tens just spams crouch and sprays in every single gunfight. He does think about how he's taking these engagements, and he chooses what he feels is the best approach in that fight in the moment. But other than that, I hope this video was helpful for you to give you perspective on some of the techniques that Tenz uses when he's gunfighting. By the way, if you're looking to master all of the things in Valorant, I did want to point you in the direction of our website. We have a bunch of really awesome aiming courses that could teach you how to master all of these tactics, and it's also backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so it's literally no risk. On top of the videos that we create on this channel, we also have a bunch of Radiant coaches creating courses on how to improve at all aspects of the game. Whether it's from specific agents or you're trying to find the best sensitivity for yourself, we have all of that available on the website, so be sure to check that all out at skillcap.com, link in the description below. As always though, my name is King, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.